This conference yep. will now be recorded. Okay, so I have another recording tool also. Let me use that as well. Yeah, okay, so every day please remind me to uh, do record because I may uh, miss that. So, so one moment. Yeah, so it's uh, recording now. So like for practice, so we have multiple options like I said. So one is virtual machine based installation so that you can make use of virtual box or uh, VMware. But the problem here is you need a higher end uh, server or laptop. So at least 16 gig and i7. But if you don't have this configuration, I my recommendation is don't uh, go for purchasing this. If you have this, okay, that is fine because it's very costly. So you have to spend around uh, 1,500 to 2,000 dollars. Okay, and uh, another option is buy one uh, used server. Okay, so you can buy servers online. There are a lot of vendors, so they are selling back the servers which, because the servers maybe they use somewhere in some industry, and maybe after five years or six years, they are just decommissioning and selling outside. They are just scrapping the hard disk and uh, into adding new uh, disk and sending it outside. But this is comparatively cheaper. You will get good machine here. But the challenge is managing the server. So one main problem with the server is the most of the servers produce uh, huge noise, then heat, power, all those things you need to consider. Okay. So that is the VMware. Oh, I have this uh, VMware uh, installed. So you can see the virtual box. This is the software and uh, uh, VMware also. In that case, you can install uh, servers on that VMware or VirtualBox. Second is, uh, this is all cloud-based. Okay. So we have a lot of cloud platform available. One is AWS, Amazon Web Service, then Google Cloud and azure and i think uh, uh, so a lot more cloud vendors are there so these are the leading uh, cloud providers uh, and one uh, thing is uh, one one, one um, thing is like uh, so i think google cloud and azure provide initial free credit uh, and this cloud I mean, for using this cloud, you need a credit card because you need to register this card and you will get a monthly bill. So in, I was using Amazon around two, three years. I mean, heavily using, and I was getting a bill around uh, 20 to $60 per month. Okay, so this is the average bill, bill I was getting. And I was using a, a lot, but only thing is even if you use one day you use one or two hours for practice. The remaining hours, you need to shut down that machines. Machine in the sense, whatever the servers you use, you started, you have to stop that services whenever you are not using. So that way you can reduce this charge. Second is the Google Cloud and Azure. So Google Cloud, the pricing details, I'm not sure. But Azure, even if uh, one uh, thing I've noticed is, so even if you turn on or turn off, so there was not much difference I could see. So like it's like uh, 300 Indian rupees, like around uh, $5 per day. So that was like, even if the machine was shut down, so it was uh, charging that the same amount. So I need to, uh, okay, there are like multiple documentations available on that pricing part. So my re request is uh, to understand that pricing part very well. So before using also keep an eye on this uh, billing so every day you can see that previous days usage charge so in aws and all i will show you so for demonstration purpose i use aws 
and also i will just walk you through this azure so how to deploy this vm and uh, how to uh, set up so maybe near to the end of the session i will show you that so for other than that for demo session i use this aws okay and i will show you how to uh, set up virtual machines and how to create and how to install etc on aws so this is all the like this part is mainly building that servers so if you are in an enterprise i mean so you are working in a company in that case you just request your backend team maybe unix team or we have separate team available okay i need this much of servers and with this much configuration so they will give you so you need not to worry about anything like okay if it's a cloud based or if it's a virtual machine or a physical machine but in production so we won't use this vmware or virtual box based installation yes definitely we we use the cloud and uh, like in house servers in most of the case they we use inter internal data center and the servers from that okay and uh, so I, I, as I said, I, I mainly focus on demo-based uh, training. So I'll not uh, go much. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't have much a PowerPoint presentation to do this because the, most of the people don't like this PowerPoint presentation. So I do everything on this hands-on demo-based training, like installation. So what are the things we need to do? How to do the installation? Along with that, the, whatever the basic theory that we need, so I'll be covering that as well. and uh, so like i said from, from your side i need is like so do practice so i'll i'll, I'll every weekend I, I, i'll give you some i will cover, cover some topic and you can also do the same thing in your environment so maybe if it's a vmware based or cloud based or you have a separate server that is also fine and if you have any questions please reach out to me you can email me or you can ping me in the whatsapp or in worst case like I, you can call me and uh, i will help you to resolve that so the first part is build a strong foundation and uh, on all these components so next you can prepare for interviews and uh, how, what are the questions and the most probably uh, probable question they ask I'll, I'll also help you on that okay so any questions okay let me check here and uh, okay uh, so 8 gig uh, okay so one question from venki is can we use 8 gig for practice so the problem with 8 gig server is so in uh, hard the one the way we are using hadoop is here we we make use of multiple servers so not not only on the single machine so we use multiple servers for installation and mainly if you want to test this high availability uh, or actual uh, scenario if you want to simulate you need to have multiple servers and also minimum uh, 8 gig per server is also needed so we can technically we can do that maybe a single node instance but it's very difficult to manage so also most of the time installation fails so we will lose a lot of our effort by building that so that is the that is why i recommend uh, to use any one of the cloud so i i, I don't recommend any anyone uh, in this list you can have any whichever you feel comfortable So any other questions you can make use of so what will be the minimum requirement for the installation number of the servers and storage and RAM? okay uh, so that is a good uh, good question I, I think you are asking about the servers that we are using for Adobe installation so that I will I will uh, show you uh, how to calculate those values and uh, but if your um, if your question is about uh, the host machine then minimum recommendation is 16 gig 
or even 32 gig is also fine but less than 16 gig even with the 16 gig also you will not get much per performance my laptop is with 16 gig i7 so with this configuration i'm not able to do well uh, at least i tried earlier uh, this with the uh, horton works okay that somehow I'm, i was able to do but cloudera the the problem is cloudera is having a lot of tools especially the cloudera manager and its supporting components itself is like memory consuming okay so let's uh, <coughs> get uh, started <coughs> So Amazon AWS charge, like I, I told you, uh, so I, I can show my uh, bill. Uh, so I, 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 like when I was doing some uh, practice and all, it was something like uh, 20, 30 uh, to maximum 100, because I think my maximum bill per month was like 100, more than 100 was not reported. So this is my, AWS console and uh, I have enabled multi-factor authentication. This is something like an extra security that we can do on AWS level. So three, eight, seven. And uh, billing, you can see. See, this is 63. So last month uh, I was heavily using this. And uh, January, so this is a bill forecast. And uh, I think somewhere we can see your uh, past bill. <coughs> so December, November, so how much? <laughs> We can uh, see here, so it's a total is 15 and uh, September 71 and August 62 uh, because I was using uh, it's heavily and around uh, six, seven VMs. Okay, so this is the average bill. So like what I said, you can control that bill whenever if you are not using, just turn it off. Okay. So any other questions? So let's get started about the initial theory part. So how do the terminology is like uh, really confusing. So everywhere people are using this Hadoop and uh, also the big data. So we are living in the age of uh, data. So every day data is getting generated. So like in um, share market industry stock exchange then uh, social networking aerospace industry hospitals then business then sensors everywhere data is getting generated so day by day the data size is increasing so why we need data so the question is so we we all i mean so if i'm running a business so i'll have data generated like so every day um, how many, uh, what about the consumers and uh, uh, what is about the bill, everything I, I'm just reporting. So why we need data? So because with data, I mean, historic data, we can get a lot of insights. So this is what we were doing for quite a long time. So even without big, big data also, we were doing that. So since we have the data, 
say for example if it's a uh, one uh, shop okay uh, so he has the da data about everyday sales data and he can just uh, make a calculation and get an insight okay so during uh, which season he is getting peak sale or which season he is getting very low sale and uh, what about the days like if, if he is getting on a weekday or weekend um, much more business so based on that insight he can uh, add some promotions or some uh, discount based on that okay so this is a simple case okay so for example this shop is something like a textile shop and uh, uh, so the, with that data, so he can uh, do a lot of things. Similarly, in an enterprise level, so if, if it's a uh, stock exchange, so we will uh, predict, okay, so what will be the value of this uh, particular stock uh, during this season or what will be the value. So th all those things we can do with the help of historic data. And these are called insights. So how to get that insight so we need to do a lot of queries and processing on this data sorry this data and get that result and by using that result we can plan a lot of things and a lot of companies are doing that even before big data comes into picture so they are doing that and based on that insight they, they are just uh, making a lot of decision based on that so the problem with this approach, okay, so we have the data, historical data, and from that data, so we are doing a lot of analysis and processing. And finally, we are getting some insight. So this insight may be in the form of graph or some chart or, or some uh, CSV file or etc. But that will be more readable or human readable form so that uh, like end uh, people or business people can read and understand that. The problem he, with this is, so if your data size is growing huge, then we have challenges like how to store this data and how to process this data. So storage and processing is a challenging task in, in that case. So what is big data? So big data is nothing but data which is beyond our storage and processing capacity. Okay, so data which is huge and which is also beyond our processing capacity. So that, that type of data is called big data. So it's just a, a word that we use to, maybe most of the time people use this Hadoop and big data interchangeably but the big data is a generic term. So that is something like data, which is huge in size and also which is beyond our processing capacity. And the characteristics of big data is velocity. We call it as three V characteristics. Okay, so it's velocity. So velocity is the rate at which data is generating. Like if you consider social networking, like Facebook, Twitter, or any social networking site. So that the rate at which data is generating is huge. So that is called velocity. Second is variety. So variety means type. So type means there are different types of data. So we have images, so we have uh, mp3 so we have a text we have a formatted data so we have a semi formatted so we have unstructured so this this kind of data will be there so data can be of different type structured semi structured or unstructured structured in the sense like tabular data which is in tabular form so unstructured means there is no way we can correlate this and this will be completely unstructured, like a video or an image, etc. So the stru semi-structured means it's like partially structured. So that is about the variety. Variety means different types. Third is volume. So volume is nothing but the size of data. So these are the characteristics of big data. 
So big data means data which is beyond our storage and processing capacity and main characteristics are velocity, variety and volume. And uh, like I said, the challenge with the big, big data is storage and processing. Somehow we can store this data by using uh, huge storage devices, but that is again costly. Processing definitely will take time consuming. So we have some money that we need to store and we have, I mean, this is in the sense expensive. Also the time, time is also money because if you are getting an insight today or the same insight we are getting tomorrow, that is all different so so to resolve this so we need something so that is called Hadoop okay so Hadoop is a framework and this framework itself written in Java and this is used for managing big data okay so we use okay so managing big data is with Hadoop. So Hadoop is a framework that is used for managing big data. So to, uh, just to, to, to terminology you need to understand what is big data. So big data is just a generic term. So that is used to refer data which is beyond our storage and processing capacity. And uh, it's something like a uh, main three characteristics, velocity, variety and volume. So velocity means the rate or data growth, we can say. Variety means the different type and the volume means the size. And uh, Hadoop is just a framework or a tool that is used to manage big data. So managing in the sense, so we have to store uh, this data and we have to process. So Hadoop provides the tools or technologies to handle this. And if, if you go to Hadoop history, <clears throat> so any questions here? If you have any questions, make use of this uh, chat window. If you have any questions, okay. So if no question, then we will move to the next. History of Hadoop. Okay. So, you know uh, who developed this initial version of Hadoop? It's a deck cutting. Okay. And uh, it started as Apache Net search engine project okay so deck cutting and team was developing a search engine net okay and uh, the some challenge they faced is so they were able to build a solution a search engine solution but the problem is when the size increases they were not able to scale it properly so parallelly they started working something and uh, so the, actually this project started in 2002 okay so next search engine started and uh, so during the development only i think uh, very few members are there in the initial development and in 2003 if you look into 2003 so google published white paper on Google file system. We call it GFS. So Google file system is a file system from Google. So we call it GFS and how the Google are Google. I mean, Google is managing their data in their uh, data center because Google is Google search engine was very I mean still now also they have very big uh, search engine and lot of uh, pages in their data center and how 
they are managing <clears throat> their data and mainly how they are storing so they just published a white paper not the complete code only the white paper on this gfs so how this works at very high level then in 2004 so once it started as in the in public forum so in 2004 so this team net search engine team developed a file system called ndfs i mean net distributed file system so we call it as ndfs so this is the distributed file system distributed means making use of multiple servers and distributing the data and storing so like i said the challenge was the storage and then processing so for storage we have got this solution from google file system white paper and they developed a net distributed file system which is basically a distributed file system and in uh, the same 2004 so google published another white paper on google map reduce so this is the programming methodology that google use okay so this is the storage methodology they use and this is so they just published this white paper on this google map reduce in the same 2004 and in 2005, the Netch team just copied the same and Netch map reduce. Okay, so they were able to scale very well by using these ideas. So ideas, the basic idea has come from the Google white papers. So Google has the white papers on Google file system and Google map reduce. So they faithfully implemented in open source as net distributed file system and net map reduce so in in 2006 this hadoop this entire project i mean so this uh, uh, net distributed file system and net map reduce moved as a separate project and is called hadoop and in 2000 six onwards there are a lot of companies started supporting this so yahoo so they provided uh, their developers and also they started funding this open source project not only yahoo i think a lot more other companies also started funding this project and uh, in 2000 uh, 2008 i think it broke a world record of sorting the fastest sorting sorting of a 1tb file by using around a thousand node cluster and the same year <clears throat> i think in 2006 google uh, yahoo built a very uh, thousand core or ten thousand core hadoop cluster so this is just a history so how this hadoop uh, evolved so initially I mean, it's uh, accidentally evolved because so their main focus is on Lucent's Nets search engine, a separate Apache project. And during that, they face some challenges. They try to rectify that. So by that time, Google published white papers on Google file system and Google MapReduce. And this Apache Nets team has taken that white paper and implemented open source distribution of the same and that is net distributed file system ndfs and net map reduce then later this <clears throat> portion okay so this is something like a, initially the portion of net search engine project but in 2006 moved as a separate project so a lot of companies started funding that and evolved as a separate project called hadoop and once hadoop has come Again, the name Hadoop just is a, just a name of his toy elephant. So he's, this this person, gentleman's daughter, I mean son, had a, uh, a toy elephant, and his name was Hadoop. So he just used those kind of names throughout this Hadoop ecosystem. So you can see some 
tool name is pig then some hive impala and zookeeper so everything you can see some uh, strange or uh, i mean unrelated terminologies they use okay and uh, so that is the name 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 come and uh, after that so hadoop uh, file system hdfs hadoop distributed file system and map produce so this came along with that lot of other components so which is making use of this hdfs and map produce this we call as ecosystem components okay so these are more and still it's evolving lot of components are there and uh, hive you can see pig scoop uh, impala etc and etc lot of components are still evolving and uh, some are already matured and uh, so this is all making use of this core hdfs and map reduce so this is about the history of hadoop and again uh, so if you look into the history so in 2002 nuts search engine project started and uh, they faced some challenges when they try to do scale this uh, the, the problem with this the, the scalability lead them into the development of Nudge distributed file system for storage and Nudge map produce. So this come from Google's white papers on Google file system and Google map produce. In 2006, so moved as a separate project with the name Hadoop. And uh, mainly we have a distributed file system HDFS and map produce. HDFS stands for Hadoop distributed file system. And MapReduce is a programming terminology. So we were talking about the storage and processing problems for big data. Okay. So storage problem is resolved with the help of HDFS. HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. So I'll explain uh, each and every components and uh, structure of this Hadoop distributed file system. Now just understand the terminology Hadoop distributed file system and uh, MapReduce. It's just a programming tool or programming technique, distributed programming technique that we use. And along with that, we have a lot of ecosystem components available. So any questions here? So for doing day-to-day uh, -day activities or appearing in interview and all, so they won't ask these theory questions, but still uh, you should know uh, how this tool is evolved and what are the components initially available and how this, on which direction it's going. So it's bet bet better to understand these terminologies and uh, uh, tools available. Now, uh, so we can see all these tools are developed as Apache project. Okay. So if you just search with Apache Hadoop, so all the Hadoop components are available as an Apache project. And uh, you can, the main challenge is the, it's very difficult to configure and manage this Apache tool project because products I mean, I, I'm not saying very difficult, but in an enterprise level, it's a bit hard to manage. If you have a thousand node cluster or hundred node cluster or 50 or even 50 node cluster also, if you are doing it in a manual, Apache based installation and configuration, it's a bit challenging. But still some people are using with the help of some uh, deployment tools like Puppet, Ansible or, or any automation tool. But it's very, but still, it's very difficult. In a multi, a few three node or four node cluster, we can build and do that, but that is okay. But if you have a multiple nodes, then it's very difficult. Second is we have a tool called Cloudera. I mean, so this is the tool as well as the company name. 
So Cloudera is a company that has taken this open source Apache Hadoop. They are also uh, people working for this Apache and they are still doing a lot of R&D on that. The, the thing is like they have some tools for managing and uh, they are providing support to entire infrastructure. Definitely this require licensing cost, but we can download and evaluate this all these products with a free of cost. Again, some version like enterprise version that require a license. So Clouder is a vendor. Similarly, we have a Hortonworks. So this is also so here tool is called Clouder Manager. And here we have Ambari. So it's a web based tool for managing the cluster and they also provide support. And another is, sorry, this is a two, three, and this is for Mapar. So Mapar is another company. Then I think uh, this is something like a Mapar uh, admin console, and they are also providing support. And uh, we have a IBM, IBM big insight also. So that is also have its own tool and support. So if you look into all these uh, distributions or companies, so they have taken this Apache and they have their own tools to manage that. And they have their own uh, tool, which is used for man deploying, managing and monitoring Hadoop cluster. So if you have, you can also take this Apache Hadoop and you can have your own uh, custom deployment tool and monitoring and managing tool that makes sense. Okay, so this, these are the different vendors and again market share, I think the Cloudera was much higher than Hortonworks, then Mapar, then other distributions. But now recently you might heard like this Cloudera and Hortonworks, so they merged together and maybe after two or three years, so they will come with a separate product. And I'm not uh, saying like one is better than the other, but if you evaluate the feature, so I feel the Cloudera is having a lot more tools and features available. The core Hadoop things are same across all these two, but from the Cloudera manager, I mean, monitoring and managing tool so this cloud or has more features and Horton works somebody is relatively simple and easy map are be honest i have not tried much but map are unlike cloud and Horton works so this is working in a different way the way its file system works is completely different from this cloud or Horton works Any questions? I think, yeah, we have a question from Prashant. Okay. So how does Cloudera support works and how much usually charge? Also, it's based on number of nodes or CPU. Okay. Uh, so this financial part, again, I'm not 100% sure. So what I feel is it's based on number of cores or number of uh, for nodes available but our the financial part i am not sure like uh, i think it's not uh, per per support call base but uh, i think for a duration maybe for one year so we have to pay this much amount for license and within that uh, period whatever the issues you have so you will get the support so for getting cloudera support uh, then once you purchase the license they will give you some ID and with that ID you have to register and also if you are working in an organization so the organization for our organization you will have multiple uh, people to register okay so each person can register that and make use of this support uh, portal and in portal so we will write our complaint so we will open the service request 
and also we have option to map our cluster with this uh, support so that whenever you open the ticket automatically it will come okay on which cluster you have issue so you can select that cluster so based on the severity if it's a production pre prod qa or test or lab environment so their support time will vary so critical uh, priority one priority two priority three like that and also for each priority so they have some sls so within that time they will uh, support us so again the support how it works is like so the first part, part is email support so they will respond to that ticket in their portal so we will get an email alert okay so this is the things we need to do in order to rectify this issue so these are the configuration changes you need to make or these are the mistakes we made so all those things they will send as an email so the same time we can go to that portal and see that because i don't have any id available to show you that and uh, the second is so they will uh, call us and uh, communicate and uh, will request to join to a webex and we'll have to share our screen and show it to them so they make take the control and do the support or whatever the changes we need it's all depends on the severity of incident so in case of production definitely they will uh, join this webex call with us and they will sort it out and immediately as possible so this uh, license charge, I'm not sure, but what I feel is like Cloudera's license fee is much, I mean, the Cloudera is much costlier than Hortonworks. So any other questions here? Okay, so the initial uh, thing is like, will be uh, all these things I think some of you already might be knowing so will be boring so I know that but the people who are uh, who don't have any idea on the Hadoop or big data or ecosystem components so they need to know this so uh, for other people who are I think for most of you already know the things okay what what are the various distributions so what is the difference or all those things so by considering the people with the uh, uh, zero background on this Hadoop. So I'm just explaining all those things. So any other questions? Okay, uh, then uh, we will just take a five minute break and uh, we can uh, start uh, sharp. Okay, I think now 5.23 and 5.28 we can start. We will just take five minutes break.
Okay, uh, so I hope everyone is uh, back. So now, uh, okay, I'm not uh, going uh, much into theory part. So let's uh, quickly build, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll show you how to build a virtual machine in AWS. Okay. And uh, in uh, maybe a little bit, if I get time, so we can, I, I will show you in Azure. So, so these two things we need to have basic understanding. Okay, what is a virtual machine or how to deploy a machine and uh, how to register. I think there are a lot of uh, videos or documentation available. So I also have some videos. Let me check that and I, I will share with you. So on AWS, how to create AWS credential and Azure. So you need to have a credit card. So yeah okay so let's uh, get uh, started with the azure okay that is fine and uh, uh, so uh, like i said i'm going to build the virtual machine in aws or azure that is the first part we need to do uh, for that okay so if you're <clears throat> uh, so once you register in in azure Okay, so the registration, I think it's not a, uh, a big process. So it's a uh, very, very easy and straightforward. Okay. And uh, you will be getting a page like this. So once you log in, okay, so it can let me uh, sign out and show you that. The only thing is just a uh, portal.azure.com. And uh, once prompted, so maybe initially you won't have this ID listed here. You have to choose the, your ID. And uh, with that ID, you can log in. Okay, I think. Okay, I'll, I'll show you that uh, the uh, process, I mean, the various uh, ways, the VM creation and uh, all other things. And once you log into this Azure, so th you will get a page like this, okay? And first step you need uh, to hear, here is, like uh, in Azure, you need to create a VNet and subnet. So VNet and subnet is a networking or virtual networking, and you will be deploying all your virtual machine in that network. So if you if you have your VM in one network and another VM in another network, so maybe the communication won't happen because in our cluster, in our case, so we need all the virtual machines, whatever the virtual machines we created should be able to communicate each other. Okay, I'll, I'll show you that uh, network concepts later, but in, in Azure, we need that first. So for that, go to the Azure and uh, you can have like create a resource or on the left side, you can see that virtual network or you can see just to create a resource and search with the virtual network. Okay, you will get that VNet or else from the left hand side, you will have this. And to choose the deployment model, classic or resource manager, use the resource manager mode, then create. Then you have to uh, create, add some name. So name is like name of your VNet. Uh, you can add some name like the uh, Hadoop uh, VNet. Zero zero one and address space. So I think uh, ten dot uh, zero dot zero dot so C I D R notation. So what is the address? Okay, and also uh, we need to check okay how many IP address you can accommodate on this. CI uh, 
you can just check CIDR at this range and uh, see with the 24 you can have IPs from this to this and if I just use 10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 16 Thought at this much you can have. Okay, choose some something like this. Okay, so 65,000 and all. And uh, your subscription by default you will have pay as you go. Maybe if you have some trial license uh, that will also be available. In my case, my trial uh, time has already expired. Initially, you will get around uh, $600 trial and resource group okay sorry uh, before uh, going uh, to create the first thing we need to create is the resource group okay so resource group is a logical uh, group okay so it won't cost anything so only just a logical name so whatever the resources you are deploying you can add in that resource group and whenever you have uh, you want to delete everything you can just delete that resource group so resource group, I can say it's something like similar to an envelope. So you are adding everything to there, but this resource group is it doesn't cost any 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 charge. Okay. So choose the subscription and resource group name. So I'm just using say RG something. Any any name you can use, and the location also. What was the location you need? So you have this is all the location where you have data center available for Azure. So I'm choosing South India as my location. So whatever the location which is near to your region, you can choose that. So review and create. Create. So like I said, resource group is basically a just a, uh, an entity that in within that inside that resource group, we will add resources. Uh, so that. I mean, so if you have multiple people are people using the same account, okay, so I'm creating uh, one VM and he is creating, so it's a bit challenging to manage. So in that case, resource manager will help us a lot. And also if I want, uh, okay, for this training, I'm creating one resource group. For another training, I can have another resource group also. Whenever that completed, then I can delete entire resource group so that all the resources under this resource group also will get deleted and I'm adding my uh, vnet and uh, subnet here so just add and here I can search virtual network sorry uh, virtual network choose this one and uh, deployment model resource manager and uh, I can choose something like Hadoop VNet 001 address space. So I need uh, address from uh, 10 series or whatever the series you want, you can choose. Okay, slash 16. And uh, I'll get this much address. Okay. Or if you, uh, I think 24 also feasible. 24 just allows this much and uh, what is the resource group okay so i already created this resource group and uh, choose that and location is this one and within uh, this vnet we need we can have a subnet so it is something like uh, okay so we have a, a vnet here and we are creating a separate network entity within that network entity we are creating vnet I mean, uh, so this is the VNet and uh, this is the subnet. It's something like a networking, uh, I, network isolation. So we have subnet here. So within a VNet, we can have multiple subnet. So total IP here is uh, 10, uh, 0, 0, uh, uh, 16, right? So we will have a 
range of IP starting and ending. So each subnet will be associated a portion of, I mean, subset of this IP subset. And this will have some saying, and this will have another ante. So you can have multiple subnet created. So here we have an option to create one. So I can just name as uh, Cloudera subnet 01. Then IP, I think uh, if I, uh, sorry, if I need uh, this entire range so that I can use, I think uh, S24 only. So if I just use 26 or 27, 28. Okay, I, I just need this IP only, right? So out of uh, this entire range, 0, 0 to 255. So I'm just taking only portion of this one so that I can have the another subnet also that can uh, make use of this remaining IP address. Okay. And this is all selecting as default and then create. So I just created a VNet first a resource group. Okay. So resource group is something like a logical name so that uh, doesn't cost anything but it is just like a logically can have so i can have multiple subnet or multiple uh, vnets everything inside the resource group so that is just a logical separation segregation we can say and within that resource group i have a vnet and within that vnet i created one subnet and i will be deploying my virtual machine under this subnet so these are the things we need to uh, do first. Okay, now go to this, click here, resource group, and you have, you can have whatever the resource groups available. Just hit that, and you can see that whatever the VNet available, right? Next is so we can have the virtual machine created here. Just okay. What you have to do is go to the resource groups okay and we have our resource group and under this resource group only i am adding my virtual machines just go ahead and hit add you can search here like a, a virtual Okay, so if this is not listing here, you can just search here. And uh, this is the global global search or main page. Just create the resource. Uh, you can have like a lot of options are there. Go to the compute and you have that whatever the operating system you need. So we have uh, RHL and uh, I don't know why see all so operating system you can choose whatever the operating system you need so I always prefer CentOS the reason is uh, it uh, maybe it, the charge may be slightly different diff, I mean sli lower than the RHL one and uh, whatever the version we need CentOS 7, LVM, a lot of VM images are there. CentOS 7, 7.3. Okay, let me uh, choose this one. This looks okay. But you, similar to AMI images. So these are the e images, images in the sense, we are building operating system from this base image. So you may be wondering why we, we have different images because it's all configured with some uh, special characteristics so maybe uh, this is something like uh, some software already installed on that okay with the, this is from cisco so this is from uh, different different vendor and uh, uh, this is from uh, microsoft etc you can choose and uh, just to deploy and see what are the uh, versions available so we have uh, we can have we have search here and uh, see all those operating systems available. 
and also i think uh, so the details are mentioned here just to go ahead and hit create Oops. i think uh, I think uh, something wrong with my Windows server. Uh, my desktop is not responding. So can you guys uh, hear me properly? Yes, yes. OK. Yeah, we so, can hear you. OK. So when I try to deploy this, uh, I'm just seeing uh, I think I may need to restart this VM. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to uh, uh, restart my uh, my desktop. Okay, I'll make any one of you as a presenter, and uh, I'll I'll join back immediately. Can you see my screen? Yeah, you can see okay. my screen. Okay, right, right. Uh, sorry, I think uh, I just uh, recording had some issue. So let me start it again.
so let me log in back to this Azure portal and uh, go back to this resource group and come here and uh, just uh, search for virtual machine and uh, I can search with the CentOS and uh, whatever the operating system and whatever the version 7.4 or 7.5 is here so I can choose that and uh, deployment model I'm selecting as a one second uh, yeah, and create this virtual machine and choose the subscription. Maybe you have free tier available. In that case, it shows as free tier and the resource group and virtual machine name. So I'm just writing as a, uh, master zero one. Any name you can give. So just naming as master zero one region is South India and availability option. So this is something like a high availability for this virtual machine itself so that this Azure cloud vendor provides. So we are not choosing that at this time. And the image is like a CentOS 7.5. And what is the type? So this is something we can change and we can see the pricing. I mean, it pricing details also. And if you need, four core 16 gig on monthly you will uh, get this much bill and uh, if, if i mean this is something like you are using and uh, turning it on for entire month but use that whenever you are not using just uh, throw throw it away i mean to say don't uh, keep these machines if you're not using and we have two types of authentication one is a password based but this is not much secure second is ssh key based in that case you have to provide the username and whatever the public key so in linux you will have two types of keys public and private key that you can create and if you have that public key you can paste it here and use that for that private key for authentication. So I will show that later, but the time being, so we will go ahead with the password base. So username uh, is something like uh, I can use HD admin. Okay. So HD admin is a user and the password. Use the password and confirm that password. Right. So you need, uh, there are some policies like, uh, so it should be a uh, minimum this much length and it should have a uh, use all those things here. And uh, so this is something like a firewall. So inbound port rule means from outside when we try to connect what are the port it's exposed to so if you want to uh, choose that i mean ssh we definitely need and uh, the remaining port we can configure later but for the time being i'm just opening ssh alone so this is something like public inbound port then next disk so two types of disk available standard HDD that is magnetic and standard and premium SSD your pricing also will vary based on this and SSD will have a much better performance but standard hard disk definitely much slower and if you want extra hard disk added so you can attach that otherwise it will make use of uh, that standard one which comes along with this image then go to networking so we have i think is advanced part so okay so manage this yes networking here you have to choose that whatever the virtual network we have created 
and whatever the subnet we have created and in case of Hadoop installation you have to choose the same VNet and subnet that we created if you are using multi-node installation so in Hadoop we will have multiple servers or multiple hosts involved so for all those hosts we need to use the same VNet and subnet okay so this is the one thing you need to remember then only it should be able to communicate with each other and public IP so definitely so you need one public IP for this machine and uh, the remaining all I'm just leaving as default okay only the SSH load balancing and ev everything I'm just leaving as default management so this is also leaving as default so I think I can I don't want this ma uh, management so this is all I can just turn it off because this is unnecessary cost because we are not concerned with the OS monitoring and all those things at this time so we just need this VM and for just our evaluating our Hadoop so guest configuration that is also nothing need to do here and then tag so tag basically helps us to sort these VMs and add some names only that that's it just like a we are uh, adding a tag to a product like we have pricing tag like similarly we have so honor my name then so in case of an a big enterprise definitely we need to add the uh, tag purpose out of test maybe they will all have a cost and uh, something uh, then review and create then go ahead and hit create so we have the template download option etc available so that we can use for automation so right now so our VM or virtual machine is getting deployed and uh, it uh, takes some time to get it deployed so now we will, we will be getting only one virtual machine so if you need multiple VMs or multiple servers you need to repeat this process <clears throat> Just to refresh this and you can see what are the action it's happening. <clears throat> so one NSG. NSG is something like network security group. That is a firewall. And this is the public IP. And uh, this is the network card. And uh, etc. for this VM. So definitely it take a few minutes to deploy this. So any questions here? So you can try to uh, uh, create an ID here because initially they will give you free credit around $600. I think with that you can do practice a lot. Again, if you are not comfortable and then going with the pricing one, so no need to do because unlike other tool, there is no automated uh, renewal process available. So only when you go for a priced uh, version then only you will be charged and uh, again I think I have I heard one question like uh, do we need a networking uh, knowledge must so network knowledge in the sense it's not I am not saying it's a must to have knowledge but it's always good to have if you have a, some basic networking knowledge uh, and again we are not going in depth networking uh, concepts here it's just like uh, we are creating a vnet under the vnet we are just creating a subnet and uh, that gives us network isolation Okay, so now we have our uh, VM got deployed. So we will just go to the resource groups and then see this resource group. 
you can see apart from the one uh, which we i have uh, deployed also this is the vnet and subnet you can see one something like a virtual machine and this is the disk associated with this vm and this is the network interface and this is the public ip and this is the network security group which is nothing but a firewall rules or list of firewall rules that will control so what are the ips or how we can connect how we cannot connect so once you do install hadoop on this server definitely you need to modify this nsg rules because by default it block almost all the ports from outside okay uh, that we can do so this is something like we have okay so don't uh, uh, i mean be uh, so because initially it takes some time so i'm not covering everything just an overview so these are the things available so we have inbound and outbound security rules that we can alter so i will show you in depth in detail later so no worry so this is how we can deploy the vm okay so once we deploy the vm just hit that vm and you will get this public ip address then uh, take this putty okay and use that ip address then use i think uh, hd admin what is the user i use yeah so this is the user i use and uh, i can just type the whatever the password i use the user this is the user i used when i deploy this vm okay so when I creating this VM, lot of steps asked, and during that time, the one question was like, so we, username. So I just add HA admin as username. So it created a user with that name, and whatever the password I use there is added here. So I should be able to log in. For lo doing a login, I just taken the public IP. So mainly two types of IP address are available public and private so public is the one which is which we can access through internet and private is the one which we use locally so internet in the sense this ip so we should be able to connect anywhere in the world okay so from us from europe or as, as, or she, as i mean asia pacific or any location you can access this if you directly expose to internet so that is a public IP address. Okay. So mainly, if you, if you go to the any one of the cloud, so you can uh, hear like public and private IP address. So public refers to the one which you can access from outside world. Uh, that means with Putty, I'm able to connect. Maybe this is located somewhere in Azure's data center in South India, maybe in Bangalore or Chennai. So from my home in Kochi, and it's connecting to this virtual machine in that data center so that is how this public ip work again we can opt with the public ip or without public ip so it's all depends and also charge is also varies depending on that and i can change the settings like uh, appearance so increase the font and uh, i can change the colors use the system color and all and here also I can do switch to root user because most of the things we do require a super user privilege. Just do that, okay? And I can do the installation of Cloudera software. I can uh, do the uh, configuration of the cluster and etc. using uh, this tool I mean using this uh, root command if I have root command so any, any questions here
so azure aws the price comparison uh, see uh, from my experience okay so in azure uh, i i just deployed a, a virtual machines in azure and aws but in azure it, the charge is very less if you use and terminate immediately but in aws the charge is based on if it is not running there won't be much charge once and uh, there i mean so i can say if you just do the installation configuration and testing then uh, destroying this vm azure is best but if you are keeping it uh, so in my case i had experience like one vm was costing uh, 300 rupees per day i used one or two hours but still i was getting a, a bill of uh, 300 per uh, per day bill uh, I don't know uh, how maybe some something from some mistake from my side, but again, I have not done much uh, comparison, but as an overall, uh, I was just hearing like Azure is much cheaper than AWS. But uh, but AWS is also not much costlier. Only thing is, OK, so now we are not using right VM. So just to stop the VM and whenever you need, you can start it. So all other services are like, uh, so will be there. We cannot turn it off because this, there is no option to turn it off or something. Then this public IP or all those things, there is no other options. And uh, I think, uh, so this one also, we have option to uh, disassociate and later we can associate because this public IP also a chargeable option as long as we associate with this and this will be with you and no one else it will not allocate this ip to anyone else and uh, registering this azure portal uh, it's like uh, creating a new uh, email id or something it's uh, relatively easy i think uh, there will be a lot more uh, videos you can search uh, in youtube uh, i think uh, I think this is a there are a lot of beginner uh, tutorial available so you can make use of that and also if you are in during the registration if you have any uh, challenges let me know also you will get support from this Microsoft team also so if you have any challenges during the registration so this is all priced products definitely so there will be a lot of support from this vendor and whatever the things we are using and like i said there are a lot of resources available in the sense like if you just use a create option like uh, blockchain that software as service management tools and again thousands of services that or millions we can say ai and uh, then if you just use uh, see all there are millions of products available for each and every services and we are using only very minimal part of this compute component and that is just a operating system under compute also we have n number of services available and uh, once we are here just to go to the resource groups uh, what's in the story resource groups and you can see whatever the resource groups you created and you can log in and do the installation and uh, next is like a uh, aws so just hit this aws.amazon.com and uh, if you have already id just hit 
sign into this console and uh, if you don't have that just uh, i think somewhere we have a, a option to register a new id in my case since, since i already did login so that is the reason it's uh, not prompting me to type the password so sign into the console or uh, this page will come so by default if you register just a username and password or sign in with a different account so you you will get a page like this okay and the first time in your case if you don't have any id available so you will get a page like this and you can have this create a new account and it's a very easy and straightforward only thing you need to add your address email id then uh, card details and uh, a few other details like that then register i already registered with my id Once typed, it will ask you to type your password. And normally, you won't have this multi-factor authentication. You can you cannot see that in your environment. When you do that, only thing is you have to add this. This is an extra security. So the username and password some people can hack, but this one it's very hard to crack. So you can have this Google Authenticator installed in your mobile phone. And uh, you will get an image to scan that. Use that image, and it will keep generating some uh, six-digit number. So you have to use that. And every uh, few uh, one minute or something, it will keep changing that number. Use that, and uh, you should be able to log in. So this console, you will have this option. And you have to go to this EC2. So here, one thing you can do is you can easily uh, go ahead and uh, do that. No need of uh, creating a VNet or uh, subnet separately. So we will be doing that as when when we do that virtual machine provisioning. And then we will have this launch instance and. Uh, here also we have option to like community MI, marketplace, etc. So use the community MI and here you can search CentOS and uh, you will have that virtual machine. Now use that Singapore location so you can change the location, whatever you wherever you like. Even if you are in other location, you can choose the Singapore location itself. So I already have some uh, VM which I already tested. Okay, so this is the CentOS VM. And each VM will behave differently because the size of the disk and all other things are slightly different from one VM to another one. So here I have that. So I can make use of this. I'm not deploying at this time, but I will show you how to do that. So you already have seen like uh, the previous one which we use in Azure. And we will see the similar one in uh, EC2, Amazon AWS only. Also, just hit this launch instance. So we have got two options. So we can launch instance from here or from running instance. So just a launch instance, then community AMI. So here you can search the keyword like a CentOS iPhone 7.5. So the problem is, so these are the different different images from different people. Okay, so maybe they made some customization. Maybe sometimes some some uh, images with uh, disk size uh, like 50 gig or some sometimes uh, some other improvement they made. Uh, so I did. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's very difficult to add some extra space and all. So I have taken one image which I already tested and that I feel very good. Like no need to uh, do much changes as I can just use that ID, this is the ID, and I can use that. And uh, we have seen uh, in Azure also the type of VM, how many cores, how many 
memory we need i can choose that whatever the type so two core eight gig and next is so here how we in in azure we have uh, we don't we, we couldn't see this option like how many instances we need just one vm we deploy right so here if, if we just need uh, 10 vm or or 5 plus or or 3 plus 3 6 vms you can do that and the network and subnet by default you will have something so choose that use this only uh, thing you need to remember is use the same network and subnet for all the vms in our, our case what we need is so we need our vms to be communicated with each other that is the only thing we need and we no need to uh, go in depth on this network or subnet so just to understand what we need is so since we are going to deploy group of machines so we need all the machines to communicate with each other then add storage so we have seen like initially 5 gig so i'm just using 50 gig similarly here also magnetic and ssd options are there magnetic is cheaper but ssd is faster but costly and the extra disk delete on termination if i use whenever you delete this virtual machine so this whatever the added disk also will get deleted and uh, you can just hit review and uh, okay next is adding tag so we have seen this tag in uh, other azure also here also we have tag network security group so we have seen like in azure it's something like nsg here also we have groups so here you can create and whatever the port and uh, you need to communicate or you need to open so all port traffic I can just open anywhere okay so this is okay so this network security rule basically control the traffic to this virtual machine uh, I mean so this is something like I added as an wide open access so all the port from anywhere so I can choose from my IP that means no one else would be able to connect except me so I don't have a, a static IP available. So this is my uh, desktop IP. So you can verify that. What is my IP? So it's a 117201040, right? So that IP I'm restricting. The main challenge is there are a lot of people and who is always sending the messages and uh, hacking this VM. So there are a very high chance like your VM also get hacked. So in order to avoid that, you can use this network security group or NSG rule. And uh, <clears throat> you, you, this is um, this is something like I opened everything, so I can just open SSH alone, right? And uh, uh, review and launch so that only SSH, okay, from custom or anywhere I can use. <laughs> So anywhere means entire uh, from anywhere in the internet. So this is open to SSH. So and once you create it, you can use the same NSG or uh, security group. So this is something like I created, but this is full or wide open access. But in production or real time production environment, we won't use a wide open access. We will just use once this is done, we'll go ahead and review and launch. I will show you that deployment later and also I will show you what are the VMs I deployed. Just uh, these are the VMs I deployed for the one of the cloud cluster and uh, you can just start it and stop it or terminate means I'm just uh, deleting that. So all these VMs are stopped state. So the reason why I'm saying is like so if you have uh, I mean any VMs in testing so once your testing is over, you can just stop this. Okay. So stop means the next time whenever, when, when you come, then you can start this and make use of that. Because if you keep this VM in starting state, so definitely you are, you will have a huge will. So the first thing you need to remember is uh, whenever you are not using, make sure the machines are stopped before you doing a logout.
because if you are you may be using this one hour or two hour per day but if you keep the machine they will charge for 24 hours i mean effectively you may use one hour or two hours maximum so make use of that so first step okay don't uh, think this is very complicated or huge thing you cannot do nothing so this is very very simple thing we are not doing any anything in depth once you start practicing or start using so this will be much more easier than uh, this one and also our main focus is not to learn this uh, cloud or um, uh, this uh, networking technologies but when we are learning that just try to learn at least something here okay so that will be uh, always good to learn these things because anyway in near future so there will be a lot of everything will be in the cloud so at least try to uh, familiar with the two or three cloud also google cloud also there but i don't have any uh, i don't have a registration or id available with the google cloud so i'll have to register and see maybe uh, <clears throat> around the time i will show you that because i also uh, zero in google cloud i'll have to uh, evaluate that and uh, install vms on that so from your side just uh, try to see okay how you can uh, at least get a login id i think <clears throat> earlier uh, it was asking for credit card i think now it support debit card also i'm not 100 percent sure and uh, yeah at, at least uh, try to register if you have the card and also uh, if you provision any VMs, whenever you are not using, just stop. Okay, you feel like you need that VM next day, stop and start. Then if you feel like, okay, that I don't need this anymore, just action, just terminate. Terminate is something like delete. Here also, like in, in resource group, I can just uh, go to that resource group and delete this resource group that will delete everything so i just use then resource group name is so here deletion is very easy so it will delete all the vms and associated uh, components in this resource group i can go ahead and delete So tomorrow uh, we will start the actual class on Cloudera administration. So we will try to see how to install on a single node. Okay, Cloudera manager, CDH and all those things. And along with that, we will try to understand each and every component. The installation itself is a, a huge part because there are multiple ways to do the installation. So one is the simple and e easy one, which we can do very quickly. And the second is like how we do in a production environment. So in production, so we need to follow certain standard and then we'll have to uh, do high availability, then upgrading, high availability again. So a lot of high availability options are there. Distributed file system is there, resource manager, all those components, like most of the components have high availability feature. So we need to check how to do this upgrade operation and uh, 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 and again the security how encryption works how authorization works and how we can use a centralized authentication system using active directory okay all those things we will uh, see uh, one by one so maybe tomorrow we will try to cover uh, the installation a simple installation a one node installation so that entire week you can just try that single node installation and see various components so any other questions or feedback please let me know okay you can email me or ping me on the whatsapp so i i don't know like the pace i am going is very fast or very slow like definitely this cloud thing i i think i went uh, very fast um, because of the time constraint no worry so initially you focus on the uh, login creation part so slowly i will show you how to create definitely we will have to create these VMs uh, and for our testing purpose. I will show you all those things one by one. So any questions, guys?
Hi, Sajid. This is Prashant. Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I joined a bit late. So I don't know what is um, the rules and regulations for, for the class. That is it. Um, are we only allowed to do on chat or can we uh, talk on um, microphone as well? Uh, okay, so any, um, I mean, so during that uh, uh, sessions, I mean, uh, when we go uh, through that session, so I recommend everyone to use the chat because uh, we have around 10 members. If everyone start talking, it will be uh, a bit difficult to manage. So, uh, I mean, I recommend to use the chat. Maybe uh, at the end, we can all talk. I will give time to talk. So mm -hmm. definitely during the session, a lot of people have, everyone will have the question. So you can leave that in the chat window itself. I will uh, take a logical break whenever I cover uh, some modules and I will try to address that queries. Understand. Okay. Yeah. I think that that will be useful. I understand your concern about you know, having multiple people talking at the same time. It's going to utilize a lot of your sessions time, not able to explain enough. Um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe at um, the end I, I will give some time to talk uh, you people because again without talking uh, uh, it won't be interactive I know but again the challenge is uh, we have around eight nine uh, nine ten people. That should be fine. That should be fine. I just want to understand every every person has got different rule sets. You, you see what I mean? So I just wanted to uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. understand you know how, how does it work? <clears throat> yeah. I have a question. Uh, um, yeah, please. OK, so take example that um, if you are working in a proper environment, a production environment, you will have a number of servers you will request um, to um, say AWS admin, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, or you will request to a Unix administrator. Correct. Which all type of, um, you know, uh, servers you will request. Take example that uh, I know that in your AWS you have got four worker nodes or slaves or whatever you call it, data nodes and two mm -hmm. master. But you take example that people have seen people using um, edge, edge edge servers or hive to different servers. So so what I what I was thinking that there should be a kind of sort, sort of spreadsheet that you uh, where you can request that. OK, you have got eight type of servers and eight type each each server will be running with the different services mm. and you have different uh, configuration of those services and why we have uh, those sort of type of services and why we have that type of configuration so as an admin i think it's quite important for the admin to understand how does it uh, you know what sort of prerequisites are there for servers uh, correct. I will explain that in <clears throat> later in uh, detail. But okay. the main uh, thing is like we definitely will have a design uh, diagram or design document in place. And uh, so we have multiple ways to do that. Even we can do in a single node or we can do th three node or five node. Mm -hmm. And first we will have to talk to with our developers or the consumers who are actually going to use this. And we will have to consider the data growth. The first is we need to think about the HDFS or hard disk size and understand that. And what are the tools they need? So if they need Spark or Hive yeah. or Impala, whatever the services we need, I mean, they yeah. need. And along with that, what are the ecosystem components? Uh, I mean, the basic components we need to add. We will make a diagram on this. And then uh, we will, OK, so we will align with our IT team, OK? So uh, so they, there may be some policies, like everything has to be high available. Based on that, so we will uh, create a document. And uh, the calculation is, so we have uh, uh, three parameters need to consider. One is disk size. So definitely operating system and other overhead, plus uh, Hadoop distributed file system. Second is the memory, that means the RAM. So the RAM again, so it's all JVM process. So we'll have to consider or allocate uh, RAM size for each and every process. Say for example, HDFS. So master name node component is having a uh, five gig uh, RAM I'm allocating. And uh, the other component, Cloudera manager server, I'm allocating two gig. And we will calculate that. And okay, say so for master one, we need 
one master two we are having hive two and other master component separate etc and we will add that okay so master two we need this much memory and worker we will have uh, data node that is the file system worker component or other uh, yarn worker component and we will have definitely we'll have to think about the operating system overhead maybe uh, 5 or 10 gig ram we will allocate to operating system and uh, for workers also we will do that calculation so basically it's all based on the components that we are going to deploy and we will do a rough calculation on the memory and again uh, the cpu and disk so with that we will uh, okay so we'll submit okay so this is the configuration we need so two node we need this configuration because this is edge host and so this is the host we need this configuration and master we need and this much worker we need and this much uh, disk size we need so i will show you that in uh, later when we do a multi node uh, deployment okay so okay. these are the par parameters we need to consider and again so it's all uh, we can say 60 70 percentage is based on this one and we will do some assumption okay some extra some 30 yep. 40 percentage we will add and do that then later when we have some uh, i mean most of the time okay initially it will work very well then later when they start using we will uh, come to know the real problem okay so initially the, the developers say okay we are going to use only uh, this much application so maybe they will use very huge so maybe they won't use even that you know, whatever that they communicate to us so the first installation definitely will be uh, uh, some variation will be there but the next installation onwards okay we will be knowing that the user okay so this is their need so this is they are going to use etc based on that we will do that design so mainly we consider memory hard disk and then uh, ram we will we will uh, see some sample cases on that so i think i don't know uh, maybe some, uh, some standard template will be available in the internet we will make use of that okay fine yeah thank you uh, any other question guys you can talk now so no problem because uh, we are about to uh, wind up uh, uh shirish uh, uh, shirish uh... Will you show the automatic uh, development tool some kind of, you know, like uh, you, you mentioned recently? Uh, automated tools, I think uh, I, I'll, I'll try to do that uh, uh, Puppet or Ansible. This is the one uh, deployment tool you are talking about? Yes, yes, you are right. Yeah, we will uh, try to see that in uh, maybe uh, end uh, or uh, once we finish these topics. So we will see something we can do that because a lot of REST API and uh, tools are available. I have not done much on Cloudera with that, uh, but in uh, Hortonworks, I tried that with the Puppet. So it's basically uh, we will have everything as a code. We can say infrastructure as code. Like, uh, so we'll just trigger that everything it will uh, deploy. Maybe a couple of, with the help of a couple of scripts, so it will deploy the cluster. Okay. Oh. We will, we will see that again. I have to check that and uh, uh, we'll try. Okay. Um, so technically that is feasible, I, I mean to say. So we have a lot of, uh, first we do the installation of Cloudera Manager, Agent and Server and configuration of that. So that we can automate with the help of Puppet or Ansible. The next is installation. We have option to do it via a REST API call. That is also feasible. We, we will see that maybe once we complete all this basic topic and other advanced uh, security and other topic one at the end, please remind me. I'll also, I'm just uh, making a note of that. Okay. So any other question? And, and on, uh, that note, on that note, what gentleman just said, um, I have, I have done some research on that one. I know that probably, you know, that, um, Apache Hadoop, the the without any uh, you know badge on it, that I think uh, these DevOps tool, uh, they works quite good on the you know the Apache Hadoop, but for that reason for which we are gonna use DevOps tool, that's why Hortonworks came up with Ambari or Cloud Cloudra came up with the Cloudra Manager. So mm -hmm. I I I didn't get much I think what, what how best we can utilize 
uh, these DevOps tools for 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 uh, product like Cloud Run or or Hortonworks. Thank you. Uh, yeah, correct. Uh, I mean, so the I mean, in an enterprise level, uh, most of the people, if if they have Cloudera manager, they use that Cloudera manager itself. If they have Ambari, use that. But some people, very rare case, uh, I could see. So they were using this Apache Hadoop along with uh, this DevOps tool and uh, open source tool, and they were using Apache Hadoop in a production environment. Okay, we will see that. What are the different options? So once we have gone through this one, any other questions? And uh, we are getting today's recording, right? So we can practice. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll send that. So you mainly focus on these uh, two uh, things, like uh, any one of these cloud registration. And uh, also, if you have, uh, if, if you can just, I think in YouTube and all, there are a lot of uh, publicly available videos available. So just uh, watch that. And again, from the cloud front, uh, we are not, uh, I mean, no, no, no need to do much in depth in uh, cloud at this time for our deployment so we are just using uh, the vm for vm if we can uh, find some sample uh, uh, youtube video for this thing you recommend mm -hmm. then we don't need to do research you know for this uh, amazon or aws uh, or... Uh, yeah sure i'll, I'll uh, check and uh, i'll send you please thank you so we save our time to research and do uh, yeah, yeah. follow that slide that video okay so any other feedback you can just uh, ping me on my whatsapp I, I think you all have my whatsapp number so anything like if i'm going so too slow or too fast or if if any other area that we need to uh, focus uh, any, anything you can just reach out to my email id or my whatsapp then uh, I'll, I'll try to sort it out okay and also if you have any questions or any any challenges you face during your practice you can email me or WhatsApp me. I'll I'll try to respond you back. Okay. So, uh, Shiji, yeah, please. Uh, how much uh, Linux knowledge is required for this Hadoop administration? Actually, uh, so the we are uh, doing the installation on uh, Linux VMs. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Hadoop mainly we are, we were doing the installation only on. Uh, Linux. So mainly, if you go into an enterprise, mainly Red Hat Flavor. So since this is the platform that we are using, on top of that, we are installing. So definitely, we need to have uh, Linux knowledge. But no worry. So we, you can build that. So along with uh, this, so I'll 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 try to uh, show you the commands. Okay, so when we when I explain. Uh, this Cloudera uh, installation or configuration, I will show you and explain you this command. But apart from that, you try to build a foundation on Linux. So that will help you much more because uh, if you go for an interview and all, so definitely they will ask questions from Linux also. Yeah. Okay. And also that makes your life much more easier if you have a good Linux background. Any, any technology you learn, so... So basic operating system knowledge is always uh, best. Uh, I mean, uh, so understanding the installation and configuration and all those things, that is fine. Okay, even if you don't have much Linux knowledge, you can understand and do. But in a day-to-day -day life, uh, as an administrator, definitely you need to have that knowledge because some files you need to check. Okay, some uh, something uh, you are getting uh, Linux-related issues. So in and in that environment you may have separate linux team but still you have to understand this is the linux problem and you have to route to them so for this you need okay uh, also if possible uh, share us something like you know, where you face uh, linux related issues uh, so that uh, we can you know, understand yeah I'll, 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 I'll show you in that when we do the installation and configuration all the linux commands and tools that we use and uh, all, all those things i will try to cover yeah sure but uh, along with that you, you try to get some basic uh, understanding or basic knowledge also that way, especially the commands how it's work etc okay thank you 
So any other questions? Okay. So if everyone is good, then uh, we will wind up for now and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. So tomorrow's link I will be sending just uh, uh, 30 minutes before uh, the session. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.